So far, we've discussed the chemical makeup and properties of hydrocarbons. Between the reservoir and the ending flow line, our hydrocarbons will undergo great changes in pressure and temperature. And to better understand the behavior of our fluids as a whole, first, we'll look at a single component's phase behavior. Welcome to Petroleum, a student core survival guide. I'm Ina Donishvar, and we're here to help make learning petroleum engineering just a little bit easier. A single element's phase, as well as other properties, are a function of pressure and temperature. A phase diagram shows which phase an element will be at under certain pressure and temperature conditions. Each phase diagram will vary based off of the substance, but in general will carry this basic shape. Let's take water, for example. At low temperatures, we have a solid, ice. And at higher temperatures and lower pressures, we would have a vapor. And at higher temperatures and higher pressures, our phase would be liquid. Moving from a solid to a liquid will involve heating or cooling. Moving across this boundary. From a solid to a liquid is melting, as ice would melt in your beverage on a hot day. Moving across from a liquid to a solid is freezing. In the case of water at atmospheric conditions, this happens at 32 degrees F. We will consider condensation and vaporization. This happens when we cross what is called the vapor pressure line by changing pressure, temperature, or both. The first way to cross from a liquid to a vapor would be isobaric heating or cooling. This simply means the component does not experience a change in pressure. At a constant pressure, like in your kitchen, when you boil or you vaporize water, you're crossing from a liquid to a vapor region by adding heat. Likewise, cooling a vapor by removing heat will cause it to condense. At atmospheric pressure, this takes place at 212 Fahrenheit. At a constant temperature, we can move from a liquid to a vapor by decreasing pressure. We call this isothermal expansion, which can be seen when liquid butane is released from a lighter. Likewise, using isothermal compression, we can turn a vapor to a liquid. This is commonly used to make LNGs, liquefied natural gas. The triple point is a theoretical temperature and pressure at which an element could be any of the three phases. This happens at 32 Fahrenheit and 0.09 PSIA. And this is below atmospheric pressure and therefore only exists in a vacuum. An important concept of a component is its critical point, which occurs at a fluid's critical pressure and temperature. For the case of water, this happens at 705 degrees. Above this critical temperature, our vapor fluid becomes a gas, meaning our component cannot become a liquid at any pressure. Above a component's critical pressure, which for the case of water is at 3,205 psi, our fluid is considered a compressed liquid. A compressed liquid cannot become a vapor regardless of temperature. At extremely high pressures and temperatures beyond our critical point, our fluid will become a critical fluid, which is at such extreme conditions, we don't deal with it. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe to check out more of our great videos. And you can email us any questions you might have about any of our content at petroleum.studentsurvival at gmail.com. Thanks.